Today we'll look at how to create a buckling and crippling analysis of an angle section. We'll begin by creating our simulation files. We'll create an idealized part because we're going to create a shell representation of our angle. And we'll start by creating a linear buckling solution 105. Here I'll take all the defaults. And we'll go to the idealized part to create our mid-surface. We'll go ahead and promote and mid-surface. Then we'll go to the FEM and bring in our mid-surface. Because we want a congruent mesh across these two bodies, we'll go ahead and stitch. There you can see in cyan our stitched edge. Then we'll go ahead and mesh and we'll give it an element size of 4 tenths of an inch. Now that we have our shell mesh, we'll go ahead and assign some physical properties. The angle is made out of aluminum, so we'll select our 6061 material. And also here I have some customer defaults set for our mesh associated data to inherit the thickness from the mid-surface. So here if we plot the thickness contours, you can see that the thickness has already been assigned. So next we'll go to our sim and create first some constraints. We'll fix our column on one end. Making sure we're selecting edges. Then we'll put a unit load on the other end to put the column in compression. Here we'll do that in the Z direction. Again, selecting the edges. One last constraint we'd like to put on is to control the end from being able to translate. We'll go ahead and fix it in the X and Y direction so that it can only compress. We'll also fix the rotations about X and Y. Now we're ready to solve. Here, I've paused the movie. We don't have the uh, solution monitor coming up. It takes about a second to solve. And we'll review the results. Here you can see our first buckling eigenvalue is about 1,100 pounds. So that is our critical load for our column. And you can see the deflection, deflected shape here can animate that. One thing to note is that it's just the flanges that are displacing at the ends. It looks as though the spine is not deflecting for our first buckling mode. Since we'll be looking at a post buckling crippling analysis, we'll see how that will deflect in just a moment. One thing we'll need to do though is to write out our displacements for our first buckling mode. Here I'm going to write out the XYZ location and displacement at that location. We'll call it initial imperfection and we'll write it out with a, column, a comma delimiter. Now we'll create our nonlinear analysis where we can simulate the post buckling behavior of our column. We'll use our multi-step nonlinear solution 401, turning on large displacements. We'll create a 2,000 second run with 100 increments. And the reason why I'm selecting 2,000 seconds is because that's the load that I'm going to apply to the end of our column. That will ensure buckling and should also ensure crippling. And that way, when we go to plot those results, we'll be able to see that the time corresponds to the applied load, because the load will be ramped. So here I've 
dragged in my constraints. We'll go ahead and put on our 2,000 pound load on the end to compress the column and then we'll specify our initial imperfection. Here's where we'll bring in the file that we just created from our post processor. So we'll go ahead and import that initial imperfection comma separated value table. Here you can see those values. And we want to scale those values by something uh, very small because we don't need a very large imperfection in order to get the simulation to start to buckle. The smaller we're able to make that, the more pronounced the buckling will be in our XY plot. So let's go ahead and solve. Here we can turn on the solution monitor to view the displacements and see how our nonlinear solution is progressing. So here you can see it's already started to buckle and we can also take a look at our convergence in terms of the time step. So here you can see by the time what our applied load is at the moment. So we're getting close to 1600 pounds. We've already passed buckling at about 1100 pounds. And you can see that now the solver is starting to back up because it's, it's having trouble getting past the crippling. Basically that's where the solution will stop. So here it will try to progress and back up based on the defaults that we have set for our solver. And then once it realizes it can't get past it, it will go ahead and stop on its own. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at those results. And here, let's get up to the increment where we're just starting to get to our critical load for buckling. So here you can see the spine of the angle is still fairly straight, whereas the flanges, you can see, are deflecting. And as we pass our critical load, what you'll see is that the spine will start to cripple. So there you can see it's definitely starting to cripple there. And to see this a little bit better, what we can do is create an XY plot. Here I'll select two nodes. One will be on the flange, which will show us our buckling. And the other will be on the spine, which will show us our crippling. Let's make this a little bit bigger so you can see it a little bit better. You can see the red curve is on the flange and you can see our buckling is being shown right around 1100 pounds and our crippling here you can see is basically right at the end. So as that spine starts to go nonlinear.